Hello, beloved. You are so blessed because you know the one that truly loves you. You know by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, the Father of our Lord Jesus. You know the way which is our Lord Jesus. You are so blessed. And I hope it's some of these things sound kind of heavier than others, but I I don't feel like I should uh, dilute or make it easier, just because the audience, you know, you are free to follow or free not to follow, right? So um, that's that. So and I I did get a couple of people saying, nah, it's not my my type of show." <laughs> not my type of meat and it's like praise the lord it's be blessed and others that actually brought more so uh, just just know that sometimes we dig very very deep and um, i have to let truth come right through my mouth and clarify things in your soul but we move on um Peter's experience with Cornelius was uh, absolutely um, amazing. I think between the vision he had three times, with that you know the command to eat those uh, unclean animals, because he kept thinking about that, seeing the baptism of the Holy Spirit come coming over the whole group, it just opened his mouth and spoke a few minutes and boom and they were not dressed like the Jews they were not eating like the Jews they were not singing like the Jews they were not nothing like the Jews right so that's a church of Gentiles what <laughs> so sure enough he goes back to Jerusalem I'm, I'm sure he had all kind of um, he was thinking of all the scenarios in his mind, you know, I'm going to talk to James first. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to go here and talk to John. I'm going to ask John um, about this. And he, he, he was very close to Jesus. He might, and, uh, no, 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 I should talk to everybody. And all the scenarios. And sure enough, Peter came up to Jerusalem, Acts chapter 11. And those of circumcision contended with him, saying, You went in to uncircumcised men and ate with them. Yuck! <laughs> if you never had this type of a disappointing meeting after you have the best service, the best time with the Lord, you go home, or on the road, or somebody calls you, or go to a church, and oh my gosh, they they kill all that excitement. <laughs> so, of course, my you heard maybe about this, but um, I I was raised in a Baptist church. I found um, the word of faith. I, I was I was very since I found the Lord. I was seventeen. It's crazy passionate for Jesus. So it's very open for truth, and I found this about the authority that's given to the Christians it was never preached, never existing at that time in Romania, in the whole country. And uh, the Lord showed me that, and since I had the microphone and the platform in the Baptist church, where I was like a youth leader, I went one Sunday and I said, I'm going to preach about faith, and I'm going to command these spirits of infirmity to come out of people. I had two people, you know, I don't know, 50 people, but two people, they were bold enough to say, one, that uh, she was completely healed of something she had for a long time and was very obvious in the other one that something came out of him and he felt lighter and happier than he felt for a long time. So I had these testimonies. Um, but of course, um, the, the, you know, the pastors of the church and all that um, 
Baptist uh, denomination leaders, they came and were very against what I did. And of course, when I said, yeah, but some people did that, they were afraid to say that in front of them. So, so I got no witness. <laughs> I could have said, you know, my side, but I was by myself. So I figure, oh man, this is tough. So I totally understand what happened to Peter when he went back and everybody was kind of whispering around him. He went and he did it. Well, wow. <clears throat> How do you dare? How, who do you think you are? I mean, and of course I was not Peter. So my words meant nothing for them. Um, so yeah, my situation was deplorable, really bad. Um, basically felt kicked out of all that and basically ran like David in the wilderness <laughs> running from Saul for years. But that's for another time. <clears throat> Back to Peter. Um, he he started to say about his vision so that vision helped him and also helped him in dealing with the rest of the church because they trusted what the Lord was showing wow if he had a vision it was three times I I, we, we trust that the Lord shows up to Peter. I mean, this, he has a history of walking with the Lord. We know him. So now if the Lord came with that, we don't quite understand it. But that must mean something. <clears throat> okay, so that vision actually helped him. Plus, he took some of the brothers with him. So when... The baptism of the Holy Spirit happened and Cornelius and family, they spoke in tongues. Those were witnesses like, wow, that's the same as us. Um, so he says in the Acts eleven seventeen, If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? So he basically gave it to God. Okay, He gave me this vision. He sent me there. He was the dream. He gave a dream to Cornelius. He called me. God sent me there. He said, go with these people. You guys, more of you saw what's happening. I mean, God gave them the gift like he gave it to us. We know it's for real. Um... It's his choice. So don't look at me like, um, um, you know, I really voluntarily and with joy I did that. So, and I say this because later on we see Peter in, um, you know, Galatians chapter 2, uh, the future apostle Paul is confronting Peter because he was still a little bit in... Um, with the uh, afraid of the circumcised ones, right? Of the legalistic ones, right? So that's why I'm saying he kind of gave it to God and says, "Well, for now, this is it." So when they heard these things, they became silent, and they glorify God, saying, "I don't know how you can become silent in glorifying God, but that's that's what he says here." Then God. Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. It is so interesting that what happened to Cornelius somehow unplugged the work of grace to flow to the Gentiles. See, uh, that's, that's kind of what what I the 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 hope and the strength that I I understand now is that whatever the Lord was doing through my soul even if, even if it was so so hard so uh, pushed in a corner and who do you think you are but that thing opened the door that 
after a few years, lots of the work of grace came to that culture, came to that country. So I know it's worth it, but it's, um, it's not easy to be the opener of the doors. You would push somebody else to do that. So um, I know that there was an unplugged grace. Grace started to show up and work through that. There was a key door that Peter had to open. Remember how he says, I give you the keys? What you open is going to be open. He opened the way for grace to start working into the Gentiles. In verse 20, it talks that some of them, some of the people from Jerusalem went, uh, of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. So this spread, actually. The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God. Do you see the unplugging? that happened through obedience, what Peter did, and the door that was open, it started to go in lots of other places. Now, it might seem hard for you in that moment, but you don't know that you are in a key place that's going to open the door for lots of people to be blessed, lots of people to hear the truth, because you are the door opener. You are pioneering what the Lord does inside you. <laughs> it's a lonely place sometimes, but I'm telling you, it's so worth it. So don't give up. So Barnabas went to Antioch. He said, seeing the grace of God, he was glad, encouraged them all that with purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. These are strategic moves of the Lord. And that's why it's in the book of Acts there, what Cornelius did and what happened through um, Peter. And so important. That's, you know, Antioch was the first Gentiles church. Actually, it started to settle to the end of the earth, what the words of Jesus framed was released to the obedience of Peter. See, that's, that's something that we, we are thinking, well, if the Lord said, this is it, it's done deal. But if Peter did not obey, if he would stay within the guardrails, that door would not have been opened. Could Jesus open it to somebody else? Probably. The Apostle Paul was still in shaping up and was being built and formed. Um, but the Lord wanted it to open it through Peter. He was the first choice. And that's exactly what happened. Um, see, the, the Lord is not looking just at this immediate thing. It might be just a little home church, a little group of centurion's house that did it. But actually, in the background and in the spiritual realm, that was what opened the door to the end of the earth. Very powerful. Very powerful. Sometimes you talk to a kid or to a person, and he's going to be the first one, the door opener for a whole generation, the whole tribe, the, sometimes the whole culture, like the Ethiopian um, eunuch. You know, we talked about in chapter 8 that Philip talked to. It opens the whole culture. So very important to know the door opening uh, process. And in uh, verse 25, it talks about Barnabas because, um, or Barnabas. Barnabas was really, was an apostle, was not of the twelve, but he was the one that had this understanding 
So he departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And so it was that for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So the Apostle Paul and Saul at the time was the strategic person chosen by the Lord to use the newly opened door to the Gentiles and take the gospel to the end of the earth. Do you see the, the, the step by step? I think that the Holy Spirit is the blueprint and He sees all these moves and directs them. And He says, it's time. So the dream comes to Cornelius, the vision comes to Peter, the Lord sends him, they're baptized in the Spirit, he comes back and it's like, oh, I don't know what it is, but it must be the Lord because the Holy Spirit from behind was like leading the whole thing. And then these people end up in Antioch and Barnabas sent from the Jerusalem church. But he looks for the key person to enlarge or to go through the door and take the territory of the Gentiles. And that was the Apostle Paul. So I'm, I'm sharing with you sometimes a little bit of strategy because you might not understand. You're so focused on, on the tree, you miss the forest, right? You're so focused on this first step and this has to happen and this hasn't happened yet and I haven't met the right person and I didn't do this. And You're so focused on this thing that you miss that there is actually a whole strategic move and direction that the Holy Spirit does in your life and through your life. So I want you to pop up a little bit and start looking at the whole picture. And that's so beneficial. Love you.